she's defiant. Hi! Stop it. Oh, who is you? But has she met her match? You want to do it again? Sit down. With Dr. Phil. You can threaten them. Good. But I'm your worst nightmare, girl. Well, thank you, thank you. Well, you know, I've been doing this uh, show for 15 years, and I've met some truly remarkable people, and I have heard thousands of stories. Now, in that time, you get to thinking that you've seen and heard just about everything. That was until today. <laughs> Meet Danielle. Now, Danielle's mom, Barbara Ann, has written to me every year for the past three years about her daughter, who has stole thousands of dollars framed her mother as a drug user, and then called 911 to report her, and is currently facing grand theft charges. Now, I answered her call for help, and I sent my film crew across the country to capture what was going on inside this home. Needless to say, while my team was there, something shocking and unexpected happened. Shortly after they had finished filming, one of my crew members noticed that Danielle had vanished with the keys to my crew member's car. Oh. Now, sure enough, when Danielle's grandmother, Barbara, went outside, she found out that Danielle had stolen the car, which had the crew member's handbag, wallet, ID, and cash inside. Now, if that's not bad enough, Danielle's only 13 years old. And, of course, not legally allowed to drive. Danielle was walking outside, and we were all wondering where she went. And um, my neighbor said she took the car. She took the car, and I looked, and it was Brittany's car that she had taken. Where were your keys? They were in the bottom of my bag, in the bedroom. And I even took my phone out because I wasn't sure if she would take it or not. I parked right here when I pulled up, and I took all my makeup and my bags inside. And I also left my purse in the car, too, so I'm sure my money... My credit cards and everything are gone. In, no less, she stole my phone, so now I don't have a phone either. This is the number that you call if the car moves. So it's on right now. 15. Does she know that you're tracking her? No. Okay, now she's moving. My daughter stole um, a car. What kind of vehicle is it? A Honda Sonata. All right, Bob, just wait there. We'll go ahead and send an officer out. I take my car and you... Okay, and what? So, no, you can't go look for her. No, you can't. Uh, if I may make a police officer no, and no, they could no, stop her. No. This is so much to handle. Okay. There's something wrong with okay. her. I'm going to find Danielle because she's going, she's heading to a boy's house right now, but I know where he lives. She went through my stuff and she stole my keys and hopped the fence and then ran out and took the car and she's gone. She's there at all? She's not going to come back. And, and what's scaring me more than anything is, you know, the stove and seeing cars and everything. She put these niggas in that car. She's a little girl. There's no shame in her. There's just no shame in her. Well, at 3 a.m. the next morning, Danielle finally returned home with the crew member's car. Now, you would think, okay, she's come to her senses, so she's going to come home with her tail between her legs. No, no. She comes home, but she refuses to give the keys back to the car that she stole. Give me the keys. Danny. Oh. Give me the keys. There's somebody chasing me. Oh. Ah. You want to play games with me, girl? You want to play games? Get off me. Get off me. Take the keys, please. No, no, no. Get the keys, please. When Danielle's mother, Barbara Ann, is not wrestling her daughter uh, WWE style, she is often on the phone with the police or filming her daughter's antics. Now, two weeks ago, she called the authorities on Danielle after Danielle stole her car. And the 13-year-old felt it necessary to twerk in front of her mom while leaning on the car in nothing but thong underwear. She's 13. Yes, she moved my car. Yeah. And her underwear is outside the house. 
Barbara Ann also claims Danielle has spent over $6,000 on credit cards that she has stolen from Barbara Ann. And one of the proudest purchases to date is a stripper pole that she put up in her bedroom. Now, Barbara Ann says she's done, cannot take anymore, and no longer wants to raise her own daughter. My daughter is out of control. Tell me, bitch, tell me. 13 years old, she has stolen my credit cards. She has stolen money out of my wallet. She has even taken my jewelry. She took my credit card and purchased a stripper pole. Her and her friend went on a shopping spree on my credit card. It cost $127. Danielle gets mad, she explodes. She's actually thrown my iPad twice on the floor and cracked it. Don't do that. Bro, it's plastic! Danielle carved co. That's what she refers to me. She was mad last night. She was throwing rocks at the window. She's even stole my car. She has tested positive for Xanax and for weed. She is extremely provocative. Danielle has run away a good ten times, three times in the same day. I took the door off her room because she was sneaking out her bedroom window and getting in the car. Danielle's been taken into custody four or five times. She's not afraid of the police. She's not afraid of anyone. I really don't know what she's capable of. And that's the scary part. I'm definitely at the end of my rope. I just don't know what to do with her anymore. You wouldn't leave! You say it's like your daughter has two personalities, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? She'll go from being the sweetest little girl in the world to being, I hate to say it, but like the Antichrist. Last night at the hotel, <laughs> she spit on you? I was sitting on the bed, and she's literally, like, spitting on me. So we called the security in, then she stopped. And then she started throwing pillows. Okay, she threatened you with knives? Yes. You say that she's carved... I, I, we couldn't even say, no, yeah. blank hoe into the living room wall. Yes. When you're driving, she's grabbed the steering wheel mm -hmm. in your car yes. while you're driving. Mm -hmm. She calls you a bitch and a blank hoe and other expletives. Uh, she's run away from home more than 10 times, mm -hmm. made false drug allegation yes. to the police. Mm -hmm. I was in my room laying down. And she was in the kitchen making a little concoction of confectionery sugar in a saran wrap bag, twisted it up, took um, a little razor blade, took a, a straw and cut it, went into my bathroom, displayed everything in my bathroom, and um, called 911 and said, oh my God, my mom's here snorting heroin. The cops come. They say, Danielle, listen, we're going to give you a choice. Either we're going to go and test it, or you're going to tell us if you really did if this is really heroin or not. She goes, nah, it's confectionery sugar. So they said, all right, well, guess what? You're going to be arrested for abuse of 911, and you're going to be arrested for a, a false police report. And they took her right into custody. I can't fight the fight. So you've just given up. I, I'm a parent, and I've never found the window. You know, the one where you go stand in line to turn in your parent card. Yes, I know. I understand. I didn't even know that was an option. You know, it really isn't an where option. You, well, apparently it is. Well, you said you, you get quit. Because you get to a point where, what else do you do? Therapy doesn't work. Getting arrested doesn't work. Giving her whatever she wants doesn't work. It's just, it, nothing, 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 nothing is working. Nothing. There was a fight over a cell phone. Yes. It almost seems as though you're provoking the situation. Let's listen to this. Get your rock at me? Go ahead! Go ahead! You got one more time to hit me, Danielle. You got one more. Why, why are you moving, Dan? You can fight, Dan? You can fight, Get, Put that down, and I'll show you. Go ahead. Come on, bitch. Go ahead. You want a piece of me, bitch? The, uh, under what parenting theory does that fall? The, the you want a piece of me, bitch parenting? I don't know. Okay, well, 13-year-old Danielle is here. She says her mom, Barbara Ann, is crazy, overbearing, and controlling. And when my staff asked if she had a question for me, she said, and I quote, tell Dr. Phil he can suck my We'll meet her after the break. Everything has to be Barbara Ann's way or no way. She'll go after me. Get your rock at me? Go ahead! Go ahead! I must you in the face because she wouldn't get out of my face. 
And later... Take me outside, how about that? This is all mouth. This is mouth. Oh, Do so you want to take this outside? Because I think they can bring cameras outside. Danny, don't get all tough. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. You got a rage problem. I was never this angry in my previous three marriages. A husband with something to hide. I asked you, you any secrets from her, and you said no. You and I both know that's not true. So what haven't you told me? If you don't want to say it, then move on. Nobody knows this. I'm not proud of it. Years ago, I was... Dr. Phil, he's so sick. He's so sick. That's tomorrow. I called for help as soon as I saw her. I found her wandering miles from home. When the phone rang at 5 a.m., I knew it was about mom. I see how hard it's been on her at work, and I want to help. For the 5 million Americans living with Alzheimer's, and the millions more who feel its effects, let's walk together. Sometimes she acts like a two-year-old. She'll have tantrums like a two-year-old. She'll do whatever she has to to destroy something. We'd say I sleep with one eye open at night. <laughs> I'm at my wit's end. Well, Barbara Ann says she can no longer handle her daughter Danielle's violent and explosive behavior, and she's worried that her 13-year-old will either end up dead or killing someone else if she carries on the path that she currently is going down. Now, Danielle says the real problem is not with her, but with her overbearing and controlling mom, who she says will do anything to stop her from having fun. Everything has to be Barbara Ann's way or no way. She'll go after me. Good! Good, bitch! Like, if I tell her, like, hit me, she'll try to hit me, and I gotta, like, dodge her. Because if she hits me, I, I'm giving it to her. And I'm pretty violent. I must her in the face because she wouldn't get out of my face. Either I'm breaking down her door or she's breaking down my door. I don't stop till I start seeing dents in the door. Because I knew what I was doing, you did it. She's so over-exaggerated. But she'll be like, oh, she threw boulders at my window. The pebble's like this little. She'll threaten me. If you don't do this or that, then I'm gonna call your PO. I'm you got one more time to hit me, Danielle. You got one more I ran out four times in one day. And the cops brought me back every time. She wants me to be sent away. You want me in just as bad? Put me in jail. So, tell me what you think you're doing that contributes to this chaos and this problem. I don't behave and disrespectful. I steal cars. I steal her credit card. I ain't gonna lie, there's no reason to lie. Everybody know already, like. What do you say to yourself that gives you the right to take somebody else's car? I'm talking to be sliding, f you mean? That's what makes me wanna take the next bitch car. What now? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Are you speaking English? <laughs> do you have an accent of some sort? Tell them where it comes from, you know. <laughs> from the street. Oh. Okay. So, <laughs> tell me again, wh what is it you say to yourself that gives you the right to take somebody else's car? I don't say anything to myself. I just say, all right, there's a car. There's some keys right in front of me. I know where the car at. You know where the car at? <laughs> did you, did you go to the fifth grade? <laughs> No, I'm asking, how far did you go? Well, how... I stopped at seventh if you want to get technical. You stopped at the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. So you did go through the fifth grade. Yeah, I did. Okay, I was just curious. Okay, so you just take it and you don't consider that it belongs to someone else. No, your keys in my room, you're asking for it. You don't leave your keys. In, a per in someone's room when they've stolen cars before. Like, you asking for it. Um, so what do you think is going to happen when you happen to steal somebody's car that disagrees with that and decides that they're going to drop a hammer on you and prosecute you to the full extent of the then law? Then I do my time in jail. Jail ain't nothing. That's what I always do, and they never catch me. Ain't nobody going to catch me. Because you're too streetwise? Yup. And all these hoes laughing like so funny. She's talking about the audience, that they're laughing at her. Did, did you say the, the, the hoes are laughing? Yep. So the audience are a bunch of hoes? Yep. Catch me outside! How about that? 
her outside, I mean, she'll go outside and do what she has to do. That's what she's talking about. Oh, yeah, this yeah, is okay, all, yeah. This is all, but don't you see that this is all mouth? This is mouth. Oh, so sorry. you want to take this outside? Because I think they can bring cameras outside. Really? Because I think I flipped you. You want to do it again? Danny, don't get all tough. Please don't. This is not the place. Hey, and this is not sit the place. down. Sit down. All right, Danny. Sit down. Flip me now. Don't flip me now. Sit down. Don't flip me now. Okay, we're going to meet Danielle's grandmother, Barbara, who says while she's scared of her granddaughter, she has a tough message for her own daughter. We're going to find out what that is when we come back. Danielle went from such a good girl to like a monster. She calls me a bitch. I went there to do my job. And I ended up getting robbed. You were dumb enough to leave your keys in my room asking for it. It ain't her you got to worry about. New details in the infamous cold case. Colorado police want to speak to John Bede's now adult brother, Burke. Why do you suppose more than a decade later, they're knocking on your door wanting to talk to you again? Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. This is my final interview. Who killed Sean Bonet Ramsey? My child was murdered on Christmas night. Don't ever forget it. People have made a big issue out of the date that you put on the tombstone. What do you say to the people that say you put the 25th because you knew when she died? That's Monday. Danielle, you guys threaten me. She'll have a knife in hand and I'll go, Danielle, you're not opening up my closet door. And she'll be like, oh, I'll stab you. Yeah, I'm afraid. I'm afraid every day. Well, Barbara Ann is here with her 13-year-old daughter, Danielle, who she claims is totally out of control. Now, Danielle's 74-year-old grandmother, Barbara, says she lives in fear of her granddaughter's threats of violence and does not, she just doesn't know what else to do to save her. In a year, Danielle went from such a good girl to like a monster. So tell me, bitch, tell me. She calls me a f bitch, a hoe. One night she was in the kitchen and she had a knife in her hand and she said, how do you like if I stabbed you? Then I love you. Why don't you like me? Because you're yeah. aggravating! Last Saturday, I told her to leave. So she said, keep on walking, I'll punch you in the face. She stole my husband's car keys. I hide everything. Keys, credit cards. Danielle is very mean to her mom. Please, shut up. Please, do me a favor. Wow. And my daughter yells at her and, you know, threatens her. Happen. I fear that she's going to get hurt. I do nothing but cry. I don't want to lose her. I want my granddaughter back. Okay, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So, do you feel bullied by your granddaughter? Well, sometimes I fear her because I don't know what she's capable of. She's threatened you before. Yes. And she had a knife in her hand. She said, oh, shut up. She said, would you want me to stab you? I said, if you want to stab me, stab me. You have a very creative imagination. Oh, no. I never said that. Oh, yes, you did. I have never mistreated you. I love you. And I'll always love you. But the way you talk to me, it's disgusting. You're disgusting. such a f actress. Hey, oh, hey, oh, hey. Actress. Hey, Dan, no, wait, no, 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 wait a minute. You, you guys had your shot. You're talking to me now. And you need to watch your mouth. And you may think that you're just some tough that takes real pride in bullying a 74-year-old woman. I don't want to bully her, and she want to come <clears throat> after me. That's really low. But I just don't give a f She's going to get my face. No, you need to watch your mouth. I don't care. They have bleeps for a reason, right? This is how you... I... Dan... I... All right, Danielle, stop it. Oh, who are you? I'm your grandmother. Lean back, acting like you gonna get up and do something. Get up and do something. Then. No, I'm not gonna do anything, Danielle. I'm All right, then. Anything. You stole somebody's car that wasn't your mother's the other night, right? Yes. The keys were in somebody's purse, right? <sighs> were no, they in a they bag? Were they were in my room. And you knew they weren't your family's. You knew they were one of my crew members, right? Yep. And you stole the keys. Yep. And you went out. How'd you get out of the house? Um, I went out to. My mom's room, jumped the fence, went and ducked my bag off somewhere, and then came back into the house, and mm -hmm. then came back out. You planned the bag first. Mm -hmm. Then you came back, then you got the keys, so you wouldn't be seen leaving with the bag. Exactly. Then you went around and stole the car. Yep. And then, which one of you found her? I did. And 
Was it your car she backed into? <sighs> Well, technically, she crashed into me. I was backing up. She realized that I, I knew what I was doing and I had enough space to get out. So I was backing out and she went and took her car and she pushed forward trying to block me in. But I had, I, then I pushed the gas and I went all the way back. And then as the car was going back, she hit it. So that's what made like the little ends in uh, it. And then you left. Yes. Here's a picture of That's it. how that happened, yeah. yeah. But you, you said you knew she pulled up to try to stop you and that's when you kept going? Yeah. Okay, and you were driving the whole time? Yes. But you were able to get uh, Brittany's purse back, right? Yes, I did. Did you did you use any of the money in the purse? There was no money in the purse. So then you came back at like 3 a.m. And that's when you yes. fought over the keys? No, it was the next morning. It was the next morning you fought over the keys? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You okay. saw that you got She actually came home and where she sleeps every night is with mommy. I did not sleep with you that night because you was aggravating me. I slept no, in my not. room. <laughs> I, <laughs> you sleep I, with me every I, night. I, Danielle. So you sleep with your mom every night? <laughs> Say it. So don't. Go. I've slept with her like twice in my whole life. Oh, you guys come in the <laughs> and I meet in the <laughs> hotel. No. <laughs> that's a little bit more. Okay, well. That's in mouth. the hotel. You cannot tell me. You forced me to sleep there with I you. No, I didn't. Why well, won't well, I will get to sleep with this one? Okay, watch your mouth. <gasps> Danny, seriously. Okay, now listen. Cut it. Cut listen. It. Hey, baby. okay, hold on. Let me tell you something. Very, very soon. You're going to really regret a lot of what's Good. going on right now. I don't care. Trust me, you're going to care. I mean, it ain't her you got to worry about. Good. I'm your worst nightmare, Good. girl. Closed captioning provided by... We are the TV Doctors of America. And we're partnering with Cigna to help save lives. By getting you to a real doctor for an annual checkup. So go, know, and take control of your health. Dr. Poses. Learn your times what insurance said they pay. What's your case really worth? Call now and find out. Th this car you stole, do you have any care or consideration for the person you stole it from? No. Uh, this is Brittany right here. This is the woman's car you stole. Good. How do you feel about her stealing your car? Did you feel violated? I felt violated. I was angry. At first, I was in shock. I couldn't even believe she did it. She's 13 years old. There's no reason for her to be driving a car in the first place and then to steal my car. And I purposely left my purse in my vehicle because I knew she steals. Mm -hmm. And there was cash in my purse. It was about $100, and it was gone when I got the purse back. <laughs> mm -hmm. So she's lying about that. And honestly, so she did steal your money. She did steal my money. And I had to, I, where was I going to stay? She had my house keys. She had the fob to get into my building. I had nothing. I didn't have two cents on me. I didn't have transportation and the days of work, the stress that I went through because of this. I went there to do my job. And I ended up getting robbed. You know, I work hard for everything I have. She's never worked a day in her life. So... What is, you know, what does she care to just take something that's not hers? And, and she thinks it's funny. You've listened to what she's said. Does that, any of that matter well, to you? Well, what I think is funny is how my homeboy went through your bag and I personally watched him pull out like three dollars. When he, he started, I was I watching there was no money in my while purse. he was going through it and he pulled out no three dollars, three dollars. So okay. I understand that you want to get money, but this ain't the way to do it. I want to get money, G. Because apparently, from you ain't had no hundred dollars in your wallet. Actually, I yes, I did. And if I think I'm going to get money from you, I'm aware I'm not because you have nothing to take. All right, then. Obviously, you did. Okay, Obviously excuse you did. me. Oh, excuse you me. Was dumb enough to leave right. your keys in my room asking for it. Okay. You was dumb enough to leave your keys in my room asking for it. Who pulled out the three dollars? To one of my homeboys. Who? So I don't put names out there. I ain't no snitch. Well, it's three dollars. I don't care. I don't care. That's good. They were in a stolen vehicle. Y'all think I'm dumb. Well, let me tell you how street smart you are. Because in the last ten minutes, when I was talking to you, you just confessed <laughs> on videotape to premeditatedly setting up Grand Theft Auto. I know. Everybody knows I stole the car. So that's nothing, but I'm not going to put the name. 
live bitch in there for my You confess to premeditating the crime, then executing the crime. Then you drove, at, which you said, without a license, which is another crime. Good. Then when she blocked the car, the cars hit each other and you left the scene of an accident, which is another Good. crime. So you've confessed to premeditatedly committing grand theft auto, Good. leaving the scene of an accident, Good. and stealing her purse, and you admitted that you and a homeboy went through it. I ain't go through nothing. I yeah. did not go through that. I ain't even much on the purse in there. Yeah. I looked, he looked at me, he was like, ain't nothing in here. I was like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And he, hard, go, he go back to look at he looked at How hard everything. do you think it's going to be to figure out who this homeboy was? <laughs> So, God. let me tell you something, it ain't her you got to worry about. Good. I'm your worst nightmare, Good. girl. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto in Florida, third degree felony, five years in prison. <laughs> five years in prison. And that's before we add leaving the scene of an accident, stealing a purse, and then explaining to your homeboy how he is in possession of stolen goods and responsible for stealing money. So you, out and of then a you said it was three dollars. And I talking about some stealing money out of a purse. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let him tell it to his lawyer because yeah. you just burned him to the ground, girl. <laughs> on videotape that's how street smart you are uh, we're gonna take a break we come back we're gonna talk about why Danielle punched her mother in the chest next tomorrow on an all-new dr. Phil a husband with something to hide I asked you any secrets from her you said no that's not true what haven't you told me I was He's so sick. That's tomorrow. Closed captioning provided by... Enjoy great value when you get away and stay at over 1,000 America's and Canada's best value inns. Room discounts, instant rewards, and a home... ...and being able to provide a diverse array of high-quality health care and rehabilitation to those entrusted to our care. Brand says she is done with her car stealing, knife wielding, out of control 13 year old daughter Danielle. And as a last resort, she has begged the judge to put Danielle into the system. Now, why would you hit your mother in the chest? I, I hit her maybe in her arm, but not in her chest. Oh, you hit her in the breast. Why did she hit you in the breast? Because she knows I had breast cancer. Oh. Twice. And she knows how sensitive it is. So if she wants to hurt me, she knows just what to hurt me. Are you afraid that your mother's going to die? No. Okay, so when I got it the second time, you weren't scared? I was scared, but that was before. Before what? But there can always be a third, right? Were you and your mom close when you were growing up? Yeah. Do you love your mother? Yes. Okay, I go to the waterworks. Do you want her to be happy? Yes. Where is your father in all this? I don't know. Do you know him? Yeah. When was the last time you saw him? I don't remember. Does he have another family? Did you ask to meet that family? I don't even need to. I don't want to and I don't need to. Have you been hurt along the way? Has somebody in your life hurt you? Has somebody in your life taken advantage of you, done something to you that you couldn't fight nope. back? Nope. Exactly how you act with the therapist. You don't talk. Nope. Your attitude and behavior is very clearly a get them before they get me attitude. It's like if I'm the baddest bitch on the street if I go through life like this with my hands up it's like I can't get hurt because I'm prepared to hurt them first 
I'm prepared to always be on defense. I'm prepared to always be tough, and that way I don't get hurt. If I don't care, I don't get hurt. If I don't admit I care, then I don't have to admit to being hurt. So I just, you know, anger and hostility is just a way to hide hurt, fear, and frustration. I tell you what I think is, I think somewhere along the line she's been really hurt, and then you get cancer, not once but twice, and so that's very scary for a child, and you, you guys were very close growing up. I mean, I've looked at the pictures. Her face is not against your face by accident. That's genuine bonding and intimacy. She cares about you and you care about her. I don't think it's an accident that she sleeps with you every night because I think she has this role she plays, but then she has to touch base to recharge your batteries to go out and play the role. Yep. At some point you gotta start making your own way in this world and trying to get happy um, and you're going to have to figure this out now Barbara Ann now believes that her daughter doesn't want help and when we come back I'm going to tell you what I think needs to happen here we'll be right back Or identical twins. We're both anorexic and bulimic. You get out here and you say, we want money for all of this. I told the producers to send you home. I can't help your girls if you get in the way. The best gift you can give your daughters is get them the hell out of her house. You're encouraging your kids to run away. No, you guys didn't play the evidence. That's bull. Put the damn thing up. I'm calling bull on your bull. <laughs> missing for six years. Kyron's stepmother was the last known person to see the second grader. I believe that Terry Horman knows where Kyron is. Now. You lied to the media. Yes, because I was told to. The exclusive interview. Tell me why it's taken this long for you to speak out about this. Production. We can't do this show without you, our studio audience. If you are going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Or you can call 323-461-PHIL at 323-461-7445. I, I don't think this is an evil girl here. I, I don't think she's the Antichrist at all. I, I think <laughs> I think she's kind of taken on this persona because you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. if, if you go through life with a get them before they get me kind of attitude, mm -hmm. it's, it's very protective. Yes. And anger mm -hmm. is a very protective emotion. If you're angry, if you kind of have this rough edge on you, then you don't ever get rejected because you reject everybody right. else first. Mm -hmm. You know, that way you don't ever get hurt. It's not like you want to be accepted and, and held close because, and then when people don't, that hurts. So if you come in and alienate everybody and you're pissed off and you push everybody away and you're like a porcupine, then you don't ever feel the sting of rejection. And it's a way to go through life if you have low self-esteem and low self-worth. And I think that Danielle clearly has low self-esteem and self-worth which is really sad because I think she has so many great qualities. I think she's obviously very smart, but I do think she's on a self-destructive course right now. She's stealing cars and she's behaving as though she has no empathy. Right. And a, a lack of empathy is very sociopathic. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that about her. I mean, she says it and she plays the role, 
but I don't think that you really don't care that you've hurt this lady down here. I, I don't think you're really that cold and that shallow that you hurt Brittany by stealing her car. I don't believe that the girl that I see in these pictures, the girl that sleeps with her mother every night, the girl that you knew before and that you've known all these years, I don't believe that she is devoid of the ability to recognize others' feelings. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a persona that she's taken on and a role that she's playing. If she decides to press charges against her, she will have a felony conviction and she will go to prison. And because of the premeditated aspect and the multiple felonies committed in the act of one night, they're very likely to try her as an adult, uh, particularly given her conduct. And they're going to arrest one or more of her homeboys with her and I guarantee you they're older than she is. Oh, yeah. So they will be tried as adults. So they're all going down hard on this as well. You know, we've, we've talked to Brittany about this and she is fully prepared to pull the trigger on this whole thing. And she goes down and her homeboys with them. Today. You need to do one of two things. There is an alternative here, and uh, I want to add Kristen Hayes to the conversation here. She's the outreach director at Turnabout Ranch. And I asked Kristen to come here because this is an alternative. Because in my view, one thing you do not do in this life is you just don't reward bad behavior. She's stealing your car, she's stealing your credit card, she's stealing this woman's car. If that doesn't have consequences, then it will repeat itself. So one of two things needs to happen. She either needs to be fully prosecuted and go to the penitentiary, or as an alternative, I've asked Kristen Hayes to come here, and Turnabout Ranch is a real working ranch where real values are taught to create real lasting change. Kristen, um, is there ever been a better fit for Turnabout Ranch? This is a great fit. It's a really a great fit. Turnabout Ranch is a residential treatment center for teens that's set on an actual working ranch and in, in it's in southern Utah. And it is so unique in that students get to receive therapy, attend classes and make up school credits that they've missed, and learn values like responsibility, accountability, and respect for themselves and others, while also developing self-efficacy and self-esteem through ranch chores uh, and our amazing horsemanship program. And this is such a positive and life-changing opportunity for your whole family, actually, because we do require that you all participate in in the therapeutic process and this isn't her choice this is your choice you've asked for my help and that's what i'm telling you would you rather go to jail or would you rather go to a ranch the ranch <laughs> um, it's time to step up and be strong are you willing to support this Yes. All right. I want to thank my guest today and a special thanks to Kristen Hayes, Outreach Director from Turnabout Ranch and Hired Power, the Youth Transport Service who makes sure she gets there. <laughs> Log on to DrPhil.com and share your thoughts on our message boards. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. We will see you next time. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks, guys. Brittany, thank you so much. Kristen, thank you. Why don't you want to go to the ranch? I'd rather go home and just go back to school, do what I gotta do. Are you gonna resist going? I have to go from here? I believe so. Y'all got five seconds of this camera smell on my face before I punch both y'all in your mouth. I swear to God on everything. Mm -hmm. Y'all better both get these cameras from my face. I ain't playing with none of y'all right now, bro. I'm about to start swinging on my mama. I'm about to start swinging. I'll break your camera, I swear to God. Bro, I'm about to put this water all over your camera.
I truly believe Turnabout is the best place for us. I don't care if she's upset. Hand